Bell throwing everything he can in time. He's shooting the work. Coming out. Yeah. Your job's a joke. You're broke. You're never getting laid. It's like you're always stuck in second gear. Boom, 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 boom. Hey, what is going on guys? It is CH from Homebrew for Life here with another YouTube homebrew video tutorial on YouTube. Today, we're talking about the most popular yeast on the homebrewers market. You know, Kvike yeast. I've heard a lot of people try to pronounce Kvike yeast different ways, and I don't think anybody actually knows what they're talking about, but as long as we're on the same page, we're fine. I really wanted to make this video because there's not a lot of innovations in homebrewing, but Kvike yeast is definitely one of them. There's three main factors that make Kvike yeast stand out in my eyes. One, it ferments faster than any other yeast I've ever brewed with by far. I've hit my final gravity in 36 hours before. Two, it produces extremely clear beer, which is great, for hard seltzers and pseudo lagers. And three, most importantly, kind of the pulse for this whole video, it ferments much hotter than typical ale yeast. Myself and other homebrewers in the community, we've been fermenting with this at about 90, 95 degrees, and it's some of the best beer that we've ever had. So today we're gonna focus on the best and most affordable method to come up with DIY temperature control that ferment at hot temperatures. This is an advantage that homebrewers have over commercial brewers. Since commercial brewers can't really use this yeast, they can cool down with glycol chillers, but they can't really heat up. Homebrewers can do both. So chalk this one up for the homebrewing community. We made a Kvike video right when it came out and we were just using my bathtub to heat it up. I just crank on the tub three or four times a day and it works. But at the expense of your roommate and your wife or girlfriend absolutely hating you. And it also does waste a ton of water. Then my friend Peter from Genius Brewing sent me the Lutra yeast from Omega and we made a hard seltzer video with it. And it turned out amazing. Thank you, Peter. Come here, Peter, give me a guy. I did use the bathtub method for that again, but I started using my senses and decided that this wasn't really the best course of action. I have tried every DIY temp control method. Using the firm wrap blanket, small space heater, and an unplugged fridge aquarium heaters and big giant plastic storage bins. But all of these were kind of janky and, and dangerous, very dangerous. And if anybody ever dies from homebrew for life video, it's gonna be me. We're going down with this ship. And then one day I said to myself, hey CH, grow a brain. And the light bulb went off inside my head. Doesn't happen often, but when it does, it's good. Why not use my Anvil Foundry as a temperature controller? It's literally the best course of action by so far. Let's talk about it. All right, put your tray tables up and hold on to your titties. We are huge fans of Anvil and their electric brewing system. Anvil is very blue collar, traditional, but most importantly, affordable. Shout out to Matt from Anvil. Keep sending us products and we'll keep making videos with them. Thank you, Matt. Electric brewing systems stand out for three main reasons in my eyes. First, they do not take up a ton of space compared to traditional three vessel systems. Second, they are great for kettle souring due to their temperature control. And third, they are great for fermenting hot yeast like this. All right, so here's how it's done. Let's fill up our anvil with two gallons of tap water. This water will not be touching our beer, so it can be gross. As long as it doesn't have too much sediment in it. I still like to use the grain basket just so the pump and my hoses are not touching the bottom where it's super hot. That's the heat source. Let's crank our anvil up to 120 degrees Fahrenheit. I will be using the anvil submersible pump, but any submersible pump will work at this temperature. Come to think of it, 120 is probably more than enough. 110 would get the job done. This is what it looks like. It's a thing of beauty. This cooling coil is from anvil as well. You can buy it all a cart from their website. Shop smart. It connects to a number seven bung with four holes. Two holes for the cooling coil, one for the thermal well, and one for the airlock. If you have any questions on this stuff, I'd be more than happy to answer them on our other live stream channel called The Hoppy Hour, where we talk about everything beer, Wednesday night, 6 p.m. PST. We're gonna be there every single night until the day I die or the day they finally take me to prison. Next step. Snag an ink bird. This is the best tool in all of homebrewing. Let's set it to 95 and let's put the probe into the thermal well. All right, now connect vinyl hoses to this. We don't need silicone, it's not hot enough. Just make sure the hose is long enough to reach your water in the anvil. Always have your hose clamp game strong since we're gonna be leaving this unattended. That's what temperature control is, leaving stuff unattended. All right. 
connect one of the hoses to our pump and I like to put the other hose fastened to a ball valve just so it gives it enough weight to sit at the bottom. It's not gonna kick out like a fire hydrant hose. And that's it, ladies and germs. The anvil with two gallons of 120 degree water connected to the pump that knows when to pull water from the fermenter goes under 95 degrees. Take it in, Braj. Take it in. This DIY temp control method will obviously work the same if you have a grain father, a mash and boil, or any electric brewing system. But the only problem is it's gonna cost you an arm and a dick. So let's figure out how to do this the exact same way, but make it much more affordable. And boom, just like that, another light bulb went off. We don't need a 10 gallon vessel. We just need about one gallon. We just need to scale it down with the exact same components. So let's talk about the hack that I just used on my last batch of Kvite. <laughs> All right, Braj, prepare to get your fucking mind blown. If you work for a catering company, just steal it from your boss. But here's what we're looking for. Commercial grade stainless steel, passivated 304, just like your brewing tool stuff, coffee pot. This is $50 and it'll solve all of your problems in life. You wanna see an unboxing video? Check it out, they're all the same. Here's what's in every unboxing video. It's exactly the thing that you fucking bought, some excess packaging, and some instructions that come with it. We don't need this stuff. Unless you're planning on making coffee for a small army, we just need to focus on the meat and potatoes in life. We're making beer. This is all we need. Just this 3.5 liter coffee pot and nothing else. This is it. This is our baby. You wanna ferment hot? You wanna make some kettle sours if you don't already have an electric brew system? You can do it now with this. Check it out. It's just a little baby version. So here's what we're gonna do. Fill it up to almost the brim. You'll see a max line. We need another temperature control for the $50 coffee machine or it's gonna melt our vinyl hosing and destroy our pump. See, the anvil already has its own pump. So we don't have to worry about that. Let's do the math. Connect the coffee pot to another temperature control and set it to around 110, 120 degrees. And everything else is just the same, but instead of buying a thousand dollar grain father just to use as a temperature control, you drop 50 bucks on 304 graded stainless steel commercial coffee machine. From the top, the ink bird is still set to 95 with the probe and the fermenter's thermal well, with our pump being connected to the ink bird and the heating slot. And the coffee pot is connected to another temperature control to 110. Congratulations, you just learned something that shreds. If you've made it this far, let's have a cheers. But I'm not just talking about any cheers. I'm talking about the cheers that you earn. I'm talking about the working man's cheers. I'm talking about the working women's cheers. Those who break their backs all day just to come home and be unappreciated. The people that sit in traffic all day, one hour commute to and from each way when their AC doesn't work, nor does their tape deck work. I'm talking about the people that sit there every day in front of their shitty bosses while their bosses just blab and blab and blab and blab and blab. If you hate your boss and I hate your boss. This one's for you, Brajas. Say it. M. No. B. Just say it. C. Thank you for watching this week's video. This coffee pot is a great hack for kettle sours, kvike yeast, sous vide videos, sous vide, sous vide. Works great, as long as you have another temperature controller. We have a sous video coming out this month. We have a lot of videos coming out this month. This might be the only month Homebrew for Life has ever had four videos come out in one month. So that's it. We'll see you guys on the hoppy hour tonight, six o'clock, 6 p.m. Be there or I'll get you. I would just go ahead and get you. And there's a link in the bio for that. Now cheers to these brushes for supporting Homebrew for Life Awareness. That's it, as always. Cheers to eating good and cheers to drinking good.
All right, hops. Buying hops by the pound. Amazon's getting way better. I don't know if it's, I don't know if it was like like an Amazon thing, or if it's just sporadic. But Amazon is getting way better. I saw like a pound of Chinook the other day for eighteen dollars. That is a great price. That is a great price. And you just got to kind of check it every day. If you see something that you like, pull the trigger right then and there, because it's like Costco. It might not be there tomorrow. You like that Vespa scooter at Costco? You go back. It's not there. They want you to buy it on impulse. They want you to buy it on impulse. And then if you don't want to go that route, route, you want to go Yakima, Yakima Valley hops. And don't be like me. Do not be like me and buy one pound and pay for shipping. That's $9 because you can get up to like five pounds and it's still nine bucks. I think you get up to five pounds. And then after that, I think it goes to like $15.50. It goes to $15.50. If you do buy on Yakima Valley, buy um, two or three pounds. And they do have sales on Friday. They do have sales on Friday. So be looking for those. There's always hops. There's always a surplus. There's always leftover hops. There's always leftover hops. And um, that's how you buy hops. That's how you buy hops. More often than not, if you can see something on Amazon, pull the trigger, Yakima Valley. And when I was talking earlier about how us home brewers have an advantage over commercial brewers is because here comes cancel culture. Oh, it's Trevor. Mario Kart in one hour. I'm down. Is because if you have a vacuum sealer, you can preserve them longer. I had a vacuum sealer in that video. I my vacuum sealer is about 45 bucks on Amazon. It should last years. Uh, I don't. I think all the plastic the vacuum plastic. I think it's all sous vide grade. I think it's all food grade. I think it's a good question. We're all going to die anyways, man. Just use the, just use the goddamn thing. Artillery. I vacuum seal my hops. Yeah. Like with most breweries, they do not vacuum seal their hops. They just, you know, they've got the big bag. They pour it out, they wrap it up and they duct tape it. You know, granted they're brewing a lot more than us. Finally feel better. Finally feel good. They are brewing a lot more than us, so they don't have to put them in the put them down, preserve them in the freezer as long. But when we do, we have less oxygen in our hops, and always freeze them. That's the third thing: buy hops, buy the pound, buy them off Yakima Valley. Don't buy one pound at a time. You're paying nine bucks, whether it's one pound or five. Get a vacuum sealer, and then put them back in the freezer. That's the four ways of being a hot barrage. And if anybody has any other information than that, let me know because I think that's as good as it gets for me.